Hey, this is AC's 8-Bit Zone. Today's a big announcement for my latest project that I've been working on, which is the Coco DV. It's going to be going on sale due to the uh, arrival of, of ICs in the marketplace. So uh, I missed almost all of Septandi as far as publishing videos because I was so busy preparing for this. If you have questions about Coco DV or just want to make an inquiry about purchasing one, send me an email to ac8bitzone at gmail.com. You can also find my email address in the YouTube About tab. Without further ado, let's get into Coco DV and this latest update. If you've been following along with my progress over the last few months, you know all about Coco DV that it's a upgrade for Color Computer 1 or Color Computer 2 that provides digital video straight out from the Coco to a DVI monitor or an HDI monitor. Hey, I'm sorry, HDMI monitor. And it supports all of the original graphics of the Color Computer but it also adds some amazing new modes, some uh, graphics modes that include sprites, that include horizontal and vertical scrolling. Here's a little bit of the scrolling in action right here as we go up screen or down screen. And it also adds tile graphics modes where you can define a set of eight by eight pixel uh, tiles and then you can draw the background by laying out tiles on the screen. Here's powering on the Coco. And this monitor is fast at syncing. Uh, it quickly determines that it's a uh, 480p signal and it comes up instantly. Let's load a new game here that I've really been enjoying this season. This is Ghost Rush by Paul Shoemaker. If you haven't seen this yet for your Coco, He's providing it at, at no charge, and it's a great game. To, uh, to change the artifact mode, there's a push button right here on Coco DV. So we can go through the, the different artifacting modes and then change the color. Okay. So the original, so the sounds of the Coco are coming through this, this RCA connector and uh, you can remote all of these connectors uh, to the back of your Coco. So the, the switch can be remoted on a little push button and uh, the RCA audio output connector can also be remoted out the back. And this is the Halloween edition. He's made several editions of this. You can get this for the, the Coco or the MC-10, at least those two platforms right now. I think I'm correct about that. And there was another version of this with, with different uh, character designs that came out before Halloween. But this game just came out this year. Um, you get one life and it's a simple single single button control. You can use uh, the keyboard or you can use your joystick uh, fire button. Let me try to actually get past this first stage so you can see stage two. I think we need to get to stage, at least stage three, to show you the, the next character that I wanted you to see. So if I can just stay alive for a few more moments. Okay, here it comes. Now things get a little more interesting. With only one life, it's, it gets really interesting. So the higher you get, the more you're going to sweat in this game. I was playing one game last night, uh, my last chance for the, uh, the game of the week, for the, the Coco Talk game of the week. And I, I literally was sweating by the end of the game because my points were getting up into the 800s and the 900 level. And that's just that's getting near the top end as far as I know. And the, it just gets so tense and exciting at that point. Uh, but give this game a try. Thank you much, Paul, for uh, making this available to the Coco community. Next, let's talk a little bit about how Coco DVs are made. 
So when I order boards, they pretty much come in like this. I try to get as many of the components, the surface mount components, installed by the manufacturer as possible, but uh, you know, sometimes not everything is available and uh, there can be uh, parts that I have to reflow myself. And, and also none of the through hole components are on the board initially and all those have to be placed manually. When parts need to be reflowed onto the board, we need some, uh, we need these solder stencils. So this solder stencil is a stainless steel or at least a steel sheet and it has all the patterns for the surface mount components so I can apply the solder paste. Solder paste comes in uh, various forms and sometimes they're in, uh, it's in a syringe and you can also get it in, uh, you get it in a little potted container. After all of the surface mount components are on the board, I like to give the boards a quick power on test. So I'll, I'll check for shorts first of all, just to make sure there's nothing obviously wrong. If there's no short on the board, I'll go ahead and uh, use a bench power supply to uh, provide five volts to the boards. And that way I can weed out any boards that, that have uh, issues before I invest a lot of time placing more components on them. Then comes the, the through hole components. There's a digital video output connector. Uh, there's a socket on top. There are pins for the bottom to go into the, the cocoa and uh, in some cases I'll apply uh, test pins or programming pins. After the through hole components are placed on the board, it's time for one of the first output tests. After assembly, it's time for the power on test. And at this point, if the uh, firmware chip hasn't already been flashed, I'll flash it with my programmer uh, in, in circuit, uh, but these can be programmed either before I assemble or, or after the boards are assembled. I've added a ZIF socket to my main test Coco so that I reduce some of the wear and tear on it. And then time to power on and see if it works. Yep, and this is a good one. And at this point, there are a variety of tests that I can run to make sure the board's working correctly. So I showed this in another video, but this is a sort of a remake of Canyon Climber with uh, tile graphics and with sprites and experimenting with lots of different colors. So there are several tests I can run, but after a few minutes, I deem this board good and it's ready to prepare for shipment. If you have questions about Coco DV or just want to make an inquiry about purchasing one, send me an email to ac8bitzone at gmail.com and I'll try to answer any question within uh, just a, a few hours of your email and uh, let you know the, the pricing and options that are available to you. This does work for all Coco 1 and Coco 2 models and it works for the 6847P and the newer chip, the 6847T1. And currently this works for all NTSC Cocos. If you have a PAL Coco, um, we can talk about that. I don't actually have a PAL, so I haven't been able to test it in one yet. If, but if one can be made available, I would like to, uh, to test this on PAL. Oh yeah, so about the chip shortage, I'm really glad that at least for right now, we're okay for material supply. 
and uh, this is late October. I'm not sure what's going to happen as we approach the end of the year, but if you place an order soon, you'll we'll guarantee that we'll have parts available and I can, can get your board built and on its way to you. Well, that's all for now, and I hope you enjoyed this update on CocoDV, and see you next time.